God bless, Igor Yevlampovich, Vasilisa. Why isn't that groom with his bride? So, you're keeping your word, Nikolai? I told you I needed a bride, and with help from you and God, here we are. The wedding is close. I see you've covered yourselves, as is tradition. Yes, we needed to have this wedding as soon as possible, so that the Bonics wouldn't drag me back. I understand you have a lot to think about. Vasya, weddings are the least of your worries, but if you can't do it, no one can. You were the matchmaker for me and Nikolai, so you should stand as matchmaker by my side at the wedding. I have no time to give a dowry at a bachelorette party. Right. The week has passed. The Dao reappeared at my house, and what I left, the girls from my village helped out with. The main thing is you being my matchmaker. I can't. I have other business. It's all right, Vasya. You can go. We have some time. And when the wedding passes, a solution to a problem might reveal itself. You too, old Igor, come. You'll be our master of ceremonies. <laughs> what an honor. Uh, to what do I owe the pleasure, huh? Well, you taught Vasilisa and helped with the items for the bride. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, you see, Vasya, <laughs> how can you say no? Who did you ask to be your best man? Petka, the accordion player. He is an old friend of mine. Fitka? What curse can he help you with? How can we attend such a wedding, Grandpa? Stop it, Vasya. <laughs> Fitka will manage. He's a jester, but he can. <laughs> Besides, we'll be there. We'll help with the evil spirits and kaldoons. All right. But Fitka needs looking after, so he won't curse the wedding himself. Thank you, Vasilisa. I brought a gift for you. I think you'll like it, and it should prove useful. We didn't come only because of the invitation. We need a nowhere's help. My future mother-in-law hired brewers to make beer. But they quit halfway through. They say demons chased them away. They're beside themselves with fear. We decided not to approach these demons without you. Maybe it's Bannix trying to interfere with the wedding. You made a wise choice. Is the bright side brewing beer? We decided both sides will brew. The villagers are close to each other. In Pakcha, where my mother lives, there are some skilled brewers. We hired them. Father is long gone, after all. When's the wedding day? Everyone is invited the day after tomorrow. First is the wedding day, and the next day we're going for a ceremony. Not everything is by the book, but you know how it is. saying about chorts? Some shadows are being noisy, turning over tubs and what not. See, they're brewing the beer by the river, so I thought that the Abdiricha might reveal herself. All right, I'll help you. After all, the ceremony is incomplete without beer, and you have your whole life ahead of you. Well, uh, come the day after tomorrow, then, if I'm the master of ceremonies. See you soon. Lord be with you. Greetings. God bless. God bless? Uh, what brings you here, Your Honor? The stove flap is over there to your right. Alexander looks around, perplexed. Grandpa, he's not here about that. He doesn't know these things either. And the matchmakers come without a groom. Hello, Vasilisa. I was in the area for business. 
and decided to drop in. I mean, I think you'll also be interested in this case I have. They talk about you and your grandfather quite often. You remember that fired short that tortured the girl in Logova? There's a similar case in the village near Pakcha. It's called Severnaya Settlement. That's where I'm going to track this chort. So, Severnaya Settlement? You start treating them with your methods. Perhaps I'll drop by. Thank you. Till we meet again. Hold on. Uh, fancy some tea? Help me move the table first, would you? Table? N no time. My patients are waiting. Alexander hurriedly leaves your izba. It's getting dark. You keep the black book ready. Khaldun's often put their chorts by the roads, as you have already witnessed several times. Soon, you notice someone's burning eyes under the roots of an old fir tree. You take a detour on the riverbank and walk past the dangerous stretch of the road. Among the treetops, you notice a silent giant. His figure towers over the trees and sheds a dark shadow on the frozen road. You greet the chort, but hear only loud laughter in reply. A sudden wind bends the tall pine. You find the Izba Alexander told you about without any difficulties, and question the locals. As it turns out, the husband of the sick woman died recently. Your acquaintance is already here. Vasilisa, it's so good that you're here. Alexander coughs and glances at your book. Did you examine the sick woman? Yes. The case is indeed similar to that in the Logova village. The woman is weak, but it's not so bad as that time. It's still early. The demon only started coming to her. What is she saying about the chort? There was no mention of chorts. You think they're to blame? She says it's a simple fever, but the symptoms are rather strange. I thought it to be anemia and nervousness. She buried her husband not long ago. It seems strange because it's not a simple sickness. She can't tell because the demon has some power over her. What should we do? The snake doesn't appear often in the beginning. We'll have to make it. If she tells me about it, it will surely come. It's late. It will try to kill us. Uh, right? I won't stand in your way. Let me be. I need to rest. The fever won't let me be. I need to search these bar to know what's going on here. They say you became a widow. Oh, Jesus Christ, may he rest in peace. Yes, he died, but I'm managing. Sometimes dead husbands come back from the afterlife. Have you heard of that? What kind of s story is that? That sort of thing never happens. Lord have mercy. Don't try to be cunning with me. I've seen all kinds of charts, and I can sense the walking dead from a mile away. Phew, witch! What could you know about me and my Vasya? You know nothing. Maybe I'll be able to convince her if I pretend to be her acquaintance. So, what did her husband do? Perhaps he was a fisherman. Looks like it. There are fish traps in the corner. What do you mean? I know you through my godfather. He used to go fishing with Yavasili quite often. He won't be fishing any now. He's dead, I'll tell you. Go away. 
You and your groom let me rest. Mm, she still doesn't believe me. How can I convince her that everything's not so simple with her guest? Look, you even have an icon here. But the dead man still comes after you. What a silly thing. I don't understand anything. I know who is to blame for your sickness. If you want to live, you must tell me. All right, I'll tell you, but don't you tell anyone. My husband didn't die. He still visits me in the evenings. But he told me to keep quiet. People won't understand. You hear the sound of scattering sparks. A fire short, familiar to you, emerges from the stove, and it immediately turns into a human. Again with your plot switch. Don't interfere with my business. You want to kill me? Didn't work out for you last time. Ha! Kill? <laughs> I have another purpose. <laughs> you stopped me here, but I'll find other creatures. Not so fast. You can't hide from me in my yes. That may be so. That's why you will be busy with my new friends. I won't be back here. A couple of chorts appear near him, while he himself turns into a fiery whirlwind and disappears into the chimney. You can catch up with that chort if you don't spend time on these demons. But what will happen to the sick woman? You open the book and read the first Zagavar. defeated the Chorts, and the woman seems to be safe now. But how many souls will this fiery snake ruin? No one knows the answer to this question. You can only continue on your way. You notice the pale heads of the drowned, looking out of the water. They are almost certainly waiting for a careless victim to drag under. You open the book and read the first Zagavar.
At the crossroads of two trade routes, you see the annual fair. Despite the late hour, trading is still taking place. Perhaps you might buy something for your journey. A multitude of goods can be found. Prianix, as well as a variety of magic trinkets. There's something for everyone here. What kind of wisdom do you possess? That which comes from above, or that of snakes and demons? You hear the lingering sounds of songs long known to you. At one of the izbas, you see a late-running vichorka. It may be worth stopping to listen for a while. You sit by a house and dissolve in a deep song. Life goes on as usual in the sleepy Pakcha village. The peasants have returned from their work and fill the village with hearth fire glimmers shining from tall windows. The shop is still open. The peasants answer your questions with enthusiasm when they learn that you are the knower matchmaker they have heard of. According to the villagers of Pakcha, they seldom encounter wonders in their mundane life, 
Everyone laughs at the men who were brewing beer. Supposedly, they were so carried away with their work that they saw the devil himself. You whisper a prayer and catch your breath. You easily find the home of the peasants who brewed beer, but their izba looks empty. You look into the galbets and see a man who is putting crosses on vials and barrels. He jumps when you call out to him. Christ almighty, what are you scaring me for? I nearly died. I knocked, didn't you hear? I'm here about the wedding. They asked to bring beer. We couldn't cook the beer to the end, you understand? The bride is a chort in disguise, everyone knows that. So some of them sharp-tailed visited us. We barely managed to escape. With God's help, I'll bless the ingredients. We managed to brew the mash, then added hops to the cauldron. Everything with God's words, everything proper. A pound of hops and a pound of malt. And then a demon showed up, Lord of mercy. Tell me about the demon you saw. Someone cursed us. That must be it. Looked like a lump of meat that kept glaring at us. So we ran. Left everything there. We prepared part of it, but we're too scared to go there now. So you brewed everything by the book? Everything as it should be with prayers and according to the recipe. First, the girls came to us from the bride's side. Tried to put out the fire. Then, later... Closer to the evening, a man came along, and at nightfall, it all began. The brides cursed, so the devil showed up. What man? I don't know. Didn't have the chance to look at him proper. He stood for some time in the distance, and then left. Did you brew by the river? Right. Wait, you're going there now? This late? You'll be killed. It's all right. I have God's word with me. The devil will have to retreat. Well, God be with you. Go to the east of the last Isba. You won't miss it. It's quiet in the brewing area. Too quiet. You anxiously look around. Evil spirits definitely had something to do with this. This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. There's some dry grass around here. It can be used for kindling. You take some dry grass. This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. You put some dry grass under the cauldron. Now it will be easier to light the fire. You can't light the fire. All the logs have burned, and there's no dry grass for a spark to take. Here is the firewood that the brewers prepared. You take some firewood. There's some dry grass around here. It can be used for kindling. 
This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. You add some firewood. Now you can light the fire. You light the fire and take a step back. A spirit shows itself above the cauldron for a moment, but it soon disappears beneath the oily froth of the beer. The fire is extinguished by the spilled beer. Could a larger fire expel the chort? This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. This cauldron is full of partially brewed beer. You feel an evil force hiding beneath the black surface. You roll back your sleeve and thrust your hand into the cauldron. But after a moment, jerk it out with a scream. Something bit you. Here is the firewood that the brewers prepared. You take a greater amount of firewood. This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. You add even more firewood. Now the fire will burn brighter than ever. This cauldron is full of partially brewed beer. You feel an evil force hiding beneath the black surface. This is where they light the fire for brewing beer. You light the fire and take a step back.
The curse falls to the ground as a repulsive ball of foul-smelling wool. This chort was created by a Khaldun, but who would wish harm upon Nikolai? You send the brewers for the intact beer barrels and return to the Izba. Later, I called some men from Pakcha after I chased away the chort. They took the barrels with the cooked beer. Everything that was left in the cauldron was gone. Ah, so much good beer wasted. Looks like some Kildun got involved. Looks like it. Well, they're lucky to have you as a matchmaker. You also keep your eyes peeled around, Nikolai. Who knows? I will. Many Kaldoons like to ruin weddings. You know how it is. Yes, and the guests are helpless. If you ruin a wedding, you can ruin the entire lives of the newlyweds. That's all right. Just be attentive. You will protect them. Right. I shouldn't expect any help from Fetka. We'll manage even without Fetka. All right, we need to go. God bless. Bright scent for you. She doesn't let anyone touch the banya. Says you're the only one who can. That's right. Tell her I'll be there soon. Get the decorations ready. All right, I'm going. And I will go to the Nikolaevs to help prepare their procession. I'll be with the guests this evening. Be on the lookout. Don't forget about demons while you're looking out for Kaldun's. Who knows who's mixed up into this? All right, Grandpa. Could you maybe bring me a jug of milk? And some pruno, as much as possible, instead of bothering me with all that questions. Yes, Vasilisa. <laughs> Why won't you treat our guest with mash? Here you go, Proshka, lad. Take it. Thank you, Grandpa. What a nice guy. Since when are you getting along so well? Since the time Proshka saved all our books. Yeah, the Bemis is all over. They ate your books, you know? And I caught them all. So it turned out not a bad thing to have any caught at home. He caught all the mice. What else do you want to know? Why do you need a Pruno? You're undead. The undead need a treat from time to time, don't they? You know. They sometimes treat Sosietkas and the parents. Why am I any different? What else do you want to know? What happened next? How did you live in a church? Ah, Vasilisa. Hard to remember. As if all the memories were gone with the wind. So, you don't remember anything? Just a bit. Too little. Well, what you looking at? Try to live such a long time, and then we'll see how good you are with all this remembering business. I do remember living in a rich house where I always sat, as a susetka, I guess. And I looked over all three sides. All four, you mean? No, no. I remember this quite well. Three of them. Our side, one below, and one above. And then there was a wind. It blew at all times, called northern. And river shells whispered me something. Sounds eerie. No, it was all right, but it is not the whole story. Just give me some time and I will have it all. What else do you want to know? Let's go. We'll talk later. Greetings, Vasilisa Fyodorovna. I've fallen ill. A fever of sorts. Look, my arms are all withered. The day is near when I won't be able to hold a plow. What did you expect? Weren't you the one last year who got drunk, climbed the Church of the Trinity, and knocked down a bell from there, eh? Yes, 
Егор Евлампович. It was I. I come to you for repentance. Василиса Федоровна, heal me, please. All right, I'll do something about it. One doesn't deserve to die because of this. Here, sit by the stove. You whisper several healing zagovers, and the visitor feels better. Oh, thank you, mistress. I won't squander this chance. Thank you for coming, Vasya. I've been crying the whole night. I have no strength left. That's how it is. If you want a good marriage, you have to wail a bit. I know, I know. But it's not that simple. I won't miss the Abdiri for much. This way you'll get a taste of grief and cry, but your marriage life will be sweet. Yes. We need to go to the Banya soon. Decorate it properly. No one knows these rituals better than you. All right. Go cry about your hair. You can comment without me. I will leave you a red ribbon. No need. I'll manage. Thank you, Vasya. I'll go then. Well, to decorate it properly, I need to place birches along the path and tie ribbons around the banya. Time to get to work. Some birch branches lie here. Here are the decorations for the banya, satin ribbons of different colors. You take the ribbons from the chest. Banya reminds you of the Abdiricha. You chase away these gloomy thoughts. There's no need to go beneath the bench here. You're just decorating the walls. You are thinking about what color to decorate the Banya. The barrel jumps from side to side and sways as if it were alive. A small boy is sitting in the barrel. He clutches a flute in his hands and blows it with all his might. Well, witch, today Petka the witch hunter will expel you from this wedding. Witch hunter? Stop blowing the flute. I'm here to help the bride. Right, as if I'd believe ya. The boy starts to torture his flute in a severe manner. If he doesn't stop playing, my head will explode. I 
can bring him around. And a Kuldoons can help too. What was it that the bride and groom appointed me? I did the matchmaking of the bride from the Bannock. You think I saved her to curse her wedding? All right, all right. I believe you. I heard that the Kuldoons curse weddings. I'm here to protect it. What have you heard about Kuldoons? Do Kuldoons fight each other? One invites a Kuldoon over, and he turns out to be weak, like you. What are you whispering there? Nothing, nothing. So then comes another Kuldoon, a powerful one, and curses everything he sees, the wedding and the first Kuldoon. Have you heard about Bannocks here? I have. They grab the cursed and flay their skin. And the bride lived with them, they say. Is she an evil spirit too? No, she was rescued. So, a powerful Kuldun helped her? Yes, I went with the groom. You? You wouldn't manage without a groom, I bet. <sighs> so, you think I can't manage? Will you help me to guard this wedding? I can. Together, we can do it for sure. Defeat the Kuldoons! It's time for me to lead the bride to the Banya. I'll look after you, witch. Let's deal with it peacefully, alright? After the preparations are made, it's time to accompany the bride to the Banya. A crowd of people has gathered to watch the ritual. Everyone wants to hear the wailings of old and have a look at the decorations. You sweep the road in front of the bride so that no cursed items will be trodden upon. You warn the bride that guests from her side might show up soon. Chorts sent by the Abdiricha. You're right. As soon as the fire is lit in the Banya, a demon appears. After you catch your breath, you wash the bride while speaking the ritual Zagavars, and then help to get her in the wedding dress.
Carts with wedding guests have already started to arrive at the yard. There will be a wedding gathering this evening, so there's going to be quite a crowd. Nikolai is here, as well as old Yegor, the master of ceremonies, and the groom's relatives. The moment the guests enter the yard, the mother of the bride brings her daughter out. You came! Jesus, so many people. Well, we came, yes, so greet your guests. No wind and then a gale. No guests and then a swarm. Greetings, Igor Yevlampovich, Master of Ceremonies. Howdy! Soon we'll make you completely human. <laughs> Greetings, noble best man, my loyal friend. Well, as they say in Sherdin, bonjour! Greetings, betrothed. Greetings. See, I'll fulfill my promise very soon. Oh well, the evening won't start by itself. Time to drink for the bride. Don't go ahead of the cart. When the master of ceremonies tells us to, then we will start. Come on, you're too ceremonial. They do everything quicker in the city. Right, and the people there will lose what's left of their souls soon. We'll start this wedding proper, as it's supposed to be started. Oh, Jesus Christ, don't be angry, Vasilisa Fyodor. Igor Yevlampich, it will be as you say. Unharness the horses and get ready for dinner, and I need to speak to you, much makeup. As you say, Igor Yevlampich, as you say. Come here, everyone. Could you be a bit quicker, old man? Come, come. You'll get what you're due soon enough. I'm not your typical bride. The others usually say goodbye to their home. I learned about this only recently. You had a chance to see it. Not every cursed one has that chance. That's right. But you'll help me if something goes wrong? I didn't save you from a demon for nothing. Thank you, Vaisa. Hey, Kola, prepare your coins. We have a song for you. Hey, hit it! Petka, let's have some drums! Well, Miss Elisa, we've been through fire together to end up here. Wait a little bit. This fist will get pretty fiery soon. Vitka, how are you doing after that night? Hmm. I don't quite remember what happened, Vaisa. I only know one thing. If it wasn't for you, the fist would have been my last. I won't forget it. It turns out you're like a mother to everyone here. <sighs> So that's how life turns out to be. For so many years, I've been raising a log, and my daughter was suffering from demons. Oh, Jesus Christ. How did it happen? Forgive me, Lord. Your child wasn't growing, so why didn't you visit a nowhere? I called a doctor, and he said that it's a kind of a scientific disease. All diseases come from demons. Why are you listening to doctors? Be glad that Nikolai got to us. Oh, I don't even know how to thank you, Miss Elisa Fyodorovna. My daughter will do well with such a matchmaker. Are you happy with the groom? Oh, we couldn't hope for better. Practical, has served in the army. What more could you wish for? Your daughter is an enviable bride. I myself couldn't have brought her up better. Lord, forgive me, but how could you say that she grew up with demons? No one would believe it. And such a dowry. Even I got a belt. Just like my daughter's. I don't know who sent it, though.
How can you live with this friend of yours? I just don't get it. He's all right. <laughs> A funny guy. Anyway, I want to speak to you about something else. We need to guard this wedding. Notice anything? Right. Instead of Fitka. But no. Everything seems proper. Keep your eyes open. Don't give any curse a chance to settle. Have you sensed anything wrong? The horses were reluctant to go when the procession was leaving the gates. I whispered a bit, and it sort of improved. But these things don't happen without reason. Why don't you have a look? Maybe with your powers of sorcery, you'll be able to find something. I don't think any Khaldun's will show up. They're scared of you. Have been for a long time now. Could be. Hmm. So we won't sound the alarm yet, right? Besides, what's a good wedding without a Khaldun duel? There was this event in my youth. Uh, I was the best man and uh, guarded the wedding. A disgruntled Khaldun showed up. They hadn't invited him, you see? So I gave him a good cursing. He was sick for an entire week after that. But you should look for a curse anyway. We don't want you to be sick. Did you teach our accordion player any words? I did, I did. And he whispered them correctly. I hope he doesn't mix anything up. What could he possibly mix up? I'll look after him. Talk to you later, Grandpa. I'll have a look around. Remember how I taught you to spoil weddings? Of course I do. Well, try to find some wool or bean sprouts. You need to dispose of them if some short left them behind. All right, Grandpa. If there's any cursed wool in the bride's way, it will bring bad luck. If it's bare wool, the procession might not be able to pass at all. You inspect the floor, but you don't notice any cursed artifacts. Everything is quiet at the moment. There are no Khaldun's around except for you and old Igor. I'm keeping my eyes open. If I notice any chorts, I'll tell you. Chorts? Regular people don't see them. Wrong. Anyone can see a chort today. Have you heard about the carts with no horses? Who moves them if not chorts? Well, I know that chorts spin the grindstones. Uh-huh. And who's pushing a cart if there are no cattle? Chorts! Who else? And then there's another thing. The locomotive, for instance. Oh, oh! And have you heard about Pelligraph? Recently in Solikamsk, the Pelligraph chorts made such a ruckus. The peasants pulled down Pelligraph. It's a sort of nobility that they have a Pele... the... graph. They cut Pele the graph. I've heard something about Pele the graph. Be on the lookout. Pele the graph himself may show up. You may go on your way. It turns out the room is noisy because several men decided to kill some time by playing cards. They are so immersed in the game that they fail to notice you. What are you doing here? This is no place for a girl. Hey, hey, wait. What are you blabbering about? Come in, Vasilisa. Welcome. Long time no see, right? Shh. She's a witch. A knower. Shut your mouth, she'll curse you. God helps. Samson, you're working on the Zimskaya station, right? Well, welcome, be our guest. Silence, you fool! That's right, from the Urolka station. 
What are the chances? The bride's parents are old acquaintances of mine. And I turned out to be a matchmaker. Do you play cards? Yes, madam. Would you like to join? So, are you familiar with the bride's parents? Her father, when he was still alive, traded salt. He would often visit our region. I told him lots of made-up stories, but he told me a true story. About, uh, his daughter. I've heard that those who play cards at a wedding will be dragged to hell by demons exactly a month later. Oh, Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! One of the card players runs away from the table in horror. What are you scaring us for, Vasya? Who knows? Maybe I'm not joking. The card players exchange looks in confusion. You may go on your way. You look into the pantry near the haystacks and see a ruffled silhouette of a susietko. He seems to be deep in his thoughts, and he doesn't notice you. Greetings, susietko kind host. Oh my, you scared me. Ah, uh, which? I get rid of you this very instant. Wait, I'm the matchmaker. I'm helping the wedding, not spoiling it. Ah, I see. I thought you won of the cursing sword. I have failed to notice in time. I think I saw something the other day, but it wasn't quick enough. The shadow escaped. Are you happy with the bride? Oh, I am. I am. I feel bad though, as I couldn't keep her away from the curse. I don't have much power in the banya. I thought that there was no Susietko here, and that the changeling lock drove you away. Oh, that was the case. The changeling was strong, so he escaped to my relatives. It was only recently that I could come back. Whom did you see? Tell me in details. The man was rummaging around the haystacks. I searched the yard, but I couldn't find anything cursed. So he hid it well, and nowhere. A cool tail straight away. He had a frog and a smart face, not like yours, a typical village face. Wait, a frog? So he was a merchant? Devil knows. He could play tricks on my eyes better than you. He sneaked up to me and grabbed me by my fur. But that's all right. I had seen enough by then. Take a look in the morning. You'll find it. The Susiedka advises you to look in the lining of the chest with the bedsheets, which are to be brought into the house of the groom. I need to go, kind Susiedka host. Very well. See you soon. See you soon. Finally, after the prolonged greetings of the foreign guests, the ritual of drinking to the bride begins. The bride brings wine to everyone, and the guests sit in the traditional order. A dinner is served that consists of many dishes, jellied minced meat, meat soup, fish pie, and calf's head. These are only a tiny portion of all the dishes served. The whole week before the wedding, the bridesmaids and the bride were preparing wailings of grief, now it's time for songs of praise and glory. Before continuing the feast, you decide to stretch your legs and walk into a decorated room. And she has the blackest book. And her eyes. A true Satan. She looked at me and I sort of froze. She wanted to set her short on me. But then I told her, I'll hit you so hard. What did you tell me? Ah, oh, sweet mother, 
Oh, Jesus. It's me who's going to hit you hard. Or should I send my chord on you? Oh, Vasa, don't curse him. He was a fool. Don't be strict with him. He used to tease me too when I was with Proshka. I know that you're good. You should be called a witch doctor. Akulina? Was it you who I cured of Ikota? It was me, Miss Elisa. Thank you, mistress. This chort has no business sitting as an Ikota. Proshka is doing good now. He's traveling with me. So, he's helping you? We knew it would turn out so well. This is my friend, Pyotr. He's very good with his flute. Well, it is what it is. If you tell any more stories like that about me, you won't have any limbs to hold that flute. Got it? G got it. So, how are you doing without Proshka? Oh, I couldn't be happier. The chort doesn't speak from inside me in a scary voice, and the other children don't make fun of me anymore. Thank you, Vasya. How's your patrol doing? Noticed any more Kaldooms? Uh, everything's quiet. I'm on the lookout. Do you like the wedding? Oh, it's pretty, and the songs, and everyone is dressed so nicely. <sighs> That's rubbish. But Nikolai's uniform looks great. I bet he has a gun at home. Oh, when I grow up, I'll cry my eyes out, and then I'll live happily. <laughs> The neighbors of this tall carpenter are lying face down on their plates, snoring peacefully. Do you think I bored them with my talking? Oh no, that's not the case. In all of Pernguberne, there's no man more dashing than me. Well, if it's about carpentry or drinking. Anyway, in all the rest, I'm afraid I'm not that good. So your axe feeds you? Yeah, I recently put a blockhouse in Anbor. I'm often hired in this Uyest. If only I was paid as well as I should. I can build whatever you can think of. A boat or a church? My tool is always with me. My loyal axe here. So no one can beat you at drinking? I can drink five bottles of vodka right now, believe it or not. I think I can beat you at drinking. You? <laughs> well, wanna try it? After several cups, you feel sick. You have to get up from the table and whisper a couple of Zagavers to come to your senses. Vasilisa Fyodorovna, God be with you. I know I didn't believe you outright, but I was wrong. Oh, thank you, Vasilisa Fyodorovna. I don't know how to thank you. Take some sour cream from our cow. Oh, it was a lucky day when we met you. Oh, Vasilisa, the bride told us about you. Such a man she got herself, right? Hush, do you want to curse her? Me? I can't curse. Here, Vasya will prove me right, right? But what a man, a soldier. Maybe I should get dragged away by shorts? Thank you for helping me. I understand that you got this friend quite suddenly. That's all right. She's a fine girl. Feel like we've known her all these years. It's a pity she didn't show up earlier. Aren't you afraid that the bride used to be a changeling? What's there to be scared about? She's ordinary now. Things happen in life. It wasn't her decision to become a demon. Such was her fate. The only one to blame here is her mother. Oh, she's also suffered her fill with the changeling. God is forgiving. The feast is not yet over, but it will not continue on without your approval. The feast continues, and each of the guests is honored with a song of glorification. After each song, it is customary to thank the singers with some money. Your turn comes. The song begins, When the sound of the choir dies down, a girl with a tray approaches you. The eyes of the performers grow wide with surprise. Your generosity is momentarily praised in a song. At the end of the feast, a ritual dish is served. Selyanka, a large baked pudding with eggs. Nikolai deftly cuts a piece of pie and gifts his mother-in-law the customary coins. 
The feast will go on until morning, but old Yegor convinces you that tomorrow is the most important day. The traveling of the wedding procession to the wedding ceremony. You go home to have a little rest before dawn. Vasilisa, here you are. I've been thinking about that wind and three sides and river shells. So you've remembered about being Sosietko in that is bar? No. I think we should go back in the church in Yenidor. Maybe something will come up there. Let's go. But is there anything left? Centuries have passed. We'll search near the foundations, in the cellar. All secrets are hidden underground. You know that better than most. When we'll be in Galbets, maybe then I can tell some future. I'm a suicide after all. Proshka stops every now and then. Circling around a bit, he hesitantly proceeds on his course. It seems as if something is bothering the demon, something about the road ahead that he hasn't himself realized yet. At the next stop, a gust of wind blows dust in your face. Could it be a demonic wedding? You jump into prickly roadside bushes, dragging Proshka with you. After a few moments, the wind dies down. The road whirlwind is a harbinger of a northern night. The wind bends the trees and sends dust and leaves flying to the empty spaces of the Yanidor crossroads. Somewhere deep in the forest, a lone wolf begins his song. Broshka stops in hesitation once more. What a wind. Why are you standing there, Broshka? I remembered. I used to visit this place often. Perhaps when I was alive. One of the church. Doesn't look like my church was worshipped in much, does it? All you think is about being worshipped. What else could happen in the crossroad that tied Proshka to this place? Hmm. Maybe you celebrated a holiday here. Maslinitsa. Ah, oh, yes. The Yuletide. I sent sorcery here. Alright, let's go to Yenidor. I bet we can find something there. The old bridge creaks from the cold wind, the cold water of some swampy river beneath it. In the middle of it, you notice forest chorts looking at you with their cold, lifeless eyes from the reeds. The demon needs only lift his paw for the forest spirits to scramble in panic. You look at him in amazement. Was this his doing, or do the spirits know about the power of the black boy? I've solved everything already. Oh, you want some herbs? Well, take a look then. The northern wind bends the treetops. Their rustling fills the swamps with a rhythmical noise, 
in which you hear the whisperings of leshies and the wings of demons flapping beneath the ground. You stop for a minute, thinking of how ancient these forests truly are. How many centuries have they stood here? How many centuries will they stand yet? Your meditations are interrupted by Proshka's grumbling. Yanidor is close. Water dump, right? Look at all this rotten wood. And it used to all be so fine. Don't just stand there, Vasya. There is the door to the Undercroft. Open it! When you approach the old wooden planks, you feel a draft. Behind the planks, you see a narrow crawl space leading deeper underground. I've seen this idol, Smithinisa. You've been in this dugout before? Yes, but when? Was it long ago? Something is missing. As if one of the passes on the Hunter's calendar has disappeared. Add it, and everything fits right into place. Majestic idols of old are now lying in heaps in this dank and wet dugout. The eerie faces of the forgotten deities seem to emanate a cold draft. One of the idols is missing his carved face. An ancient wooden angel is watching you indifferently. You peer into his face, and it looks as if he's wearing a wooden mask. You touch the mask, and it falls to your feet. Its image reminds you of the strange chorts depicted on the idols of the demons. It's not as simple as that. Search the chests. Perhaps you'll find something. What am I looking for? How would I know? Now, don't look at me like that. There are icons all over the place. It's bad for me to look at them, you know? Behind the planks, you see a... Majestic idols of old are now lying in heaps in this dank and wet dugout. The eerie faces of the forgotten deities seem to emanate a cold draft. One of the idols is missing his carved face. That's right. 
That's how I used to look when they called me Wipin. Hunters used to bring me river shells from the north, and I flew with the all-knowing wind with no rest and no respite. Roshka, is that you? Vasilisa, I remembered everything. All thanks to you. Your name was Voipi. Who are you? I used to be a god. The lord of the northern wind and master of the true people's destiny. Those who lived in the forests of Cherry. I was once powerful for a time. Other gods came and believe in me dwindled. Thou shalt not worship the idol of Voipil, and thou shalt not devout funeral feasts to him. And thus it came to be. The lights of altars dwindled, and so did my powers. Are those your idols beneath the church? Yes, they are. It was my last temple, this devil. I still remember that woman. Didn't want to lose the old faith. She hid my idols and put my face on the angels. That lit in a halo of ecclesiastical glory. Why all the shells? This is my symbol. My ears. I used to be omnipresent in this area. I used to cool the ferocious flame of the sun with my wind. But that time is long gone. All that's left are these shells. Bones of the past, long forgotten. What will you do now? I'll stay with you. I am in your debt. It's not like I've suddenly grown in power. The universe has been turned upside down. The gods of all the today's demons. And so did I. When people forgot about me, I forgot about myself and lost my erstwhile power. But now my past has returned along with some of my strength. I will help you, Mrs. Who knows what other births can I undergo? So it turned out that our Proshka used to be a chewed demon. Jesus Christ! Didn't expect that, Grandpa, did you? Perhaps now I'll be the one to tell you to hunt mice. Unbelievable! I didn't think that such strong spirit would enter your service. I'm glad all the training worked out. Or is it the book? So, now you're going to stay with us? Well, yeah. I'll live out my cat life with Vasilisa. I found mine, now I help Vasilisa find hers. And no nagging about mice. You might be Saint George himself, but you should still do your duty. While I still have my teeth, I'm the master of this house. Don't worry, Grandpa. I'll take care of it. Consider the mice gone. How do you like my new fur? What a glow. I don't know how to address you now. Proshka or Voipil? Proshka it is. I've told you that I'll stay with you until all the seals are open. You've helped me, now it's my turn. I'm not scared of any charts. How can they possibly harm me? What kind of spirit are you? A chewed one. Fairmans believed in me in the olden days. My powers have waned. I can catch mice though. You're helping me then again. Yeah, and my power grows because of that. So I won't leave you. You've remembered your past, but won't you forget it all once again? Yes, you become that what you're doing. If you'll be a Sosietka for a hundred years, then you'll become one. If you wouldn't have reminded me of the past, then who knows? Maybe I would have become a hairy old man then in another hundred. Enough of this Sosietka business. When you'll free your guy, I go back to mountains. I will fly around like a free northern wind. I won't forget a thing that way. God bless. 
Егор Евлампович, Василиса Федоровна. I came for you, Василиса. I'll get you to Pakcha. And you, Егор Евлампович, will get to Vilgard. Get ready. I'll wait for you at the gates. You reach the bride's izba with the light of dawn. The changeling girl sits under the icons and starts a long ritual of saying farewell to the maidenly headband. The bridesmaids chant, Ujjasyaduka Maladyoshenka. The bride hands out red satin ribbons to everyone. The bride gives the prettiest one to you. The ritual drags on and the guests have yet to arrive. The sounds of the last wailings quiet down close to the evening. The bridesmaids begin dressing the bride in the wedding gown, and you decide to look once more for cursed items in the yard while waiting for the guests. You go down into the yard. It looks empty and grim without wedding guests. Not surprising. This roof was home to an evil spirit for many years. You jump from a sudden rustling. You think you heard it coming from one of the haystacks. But which one? There was some noise coming from this haystack. Or was it that haystack? Two dark figures emerge from the shadows. Aha! We've caught a witch! Oh, it's Vasilisa. This isn't a fairy tale. What if I took you for an evil spirit? Sorry, Vasya. We were trying to ambush an evil Kaldun, not you. Someone has been here for sure. We've been watching all night and saw it. He sneaked in and planted an ikota on the wedding. Oh, Christ in heaven! Not in a quarter. It's all right. I'll protect you. Kaldoons have no business cursing weddings. What Kaldun did you see? He sneaked in at night. Satan himself, I swear by God. The gates opened by themselves, and the Hodden seals were flying around. It means shorts were moving it. And he himself didn't look like a Kaldun. He was dressed as a townsperson. He started to whisper. It was so fast and so frightening. It was so dark, we almost couldn't see anything. She likely won't find it by herself. Stop whistling. This flute must be good against the Kaldoons. So he ran, and we decided to change a hiding spot in case he'd be back. And you came. What did that Kaldun do? He whispered a lot and did something with his hands. I think he was scattering cursed items. We'll help you find them, Vasya. She likely won't find it by herself. All right, if you want to help, go right ahead. Pitka, look in this haystack for a peapot with nine peas. You, Akulina, look in that haystack. And I'll search the yard. All clear? Clear. You likely won't find it without us. All right, Vasilisa. The chest contains snowy white bed sheets for the newlyweds. They must be given to the house of the groom once you go to the izba. You cut into the lining and, to your horror, find something furry inside. You find a dried bear paw that emanates dark sorcery. You hide this new artifact in your bag, as if against your will. 
The chest contains snowy white bed sheets for the newlyweds. They must be given to the house of the groom once you go to the Izba. You closely inspect the floor. To your horror, you find a patch of burned dog hair. You remove it with a zagavar and throw it away in disgust. Petka suddenly calls out to you. Basa, Basa, I found it, I think. I too found some traces of the curse. You and I both have some. That's a lot. What do you have, Akulina? Huh? <gasps> well, it doesn't matter if you don't have any. I found some, Basa, also a pod. Quite a few curses. Powerful Kuldun is involved here. The children look at each other worrisomely. Give me those pods. Who knows what else is our enemy capable of? A curse? Will he summon Chorts? Mortal threat. You jump from the sudden knock at the gates. The children run inside the house, screaming. You open the gates before the surprised guests. I don't have time for ransoms. Go get your bride upstairs. I need to speak to the Master of Ceremonies. You seem alarmed, Vasilisa. I found so many cursed things right now. Someone powerful is trying to curse this wedding. You tell old Yegor about your discoveries. You can stop the wedding now. But why? Wait, I'll tell Nikolai. Old Yegor forcefully grabs your arm. Hold there. Do you want to spoil their wedding? If you stop the procession right now, their whole life could go sideways. Yes, but what if we're stopped on our way down the aisle? No one knows how all these curses turn out. That's your task, Matchmaker, to guard the procession against it. If it stops, then yes, only God knows what will happen. Don't bother the Bithroat. Do your job. And I will do mine. We'll teach Fetchka some Zagavars. He may learn something yet. All right, Grandpa. Let's go. We need to bless them on their way. All the guests gather in the Izba. After the blessings of Nikolai and his bride, the procession departs to Vilgort, to the Church of the Trinity. Sure is lucky, right? <sighs> yes, if you can return from another world. She wouldn't have done it by herself. We helped her. So is the case with the other dead. They can't get back by themselves. So Kolya cool, wouldn't pull her out without you, right? Without me or Grandpa, unlikely. You know, I've been thinking. In a way, he also pulled me out from the grave. If he didn't come that night to the pothouse, Shirts would have killed me. Yes, I think that's how it happened. I've heard what the girls in Bilgar have been saying. That you didn't want to become a witch. But you did become one, right? And so I've been thinking. You did it to help your betrothed. Why would you think that? You and your grandpa are taking me for a fall. But I see lots of things. The dead men can go back by themselves, right? I visited lots of evening gatherings. I saw how much you loved him. So I think you decided. Vasa, stop this nonsense. Nothing good will come of it. Mm. You brought back that girl, but she never died. She was kidnapped, right? I was quite close to being dead. But she betrothed. Is dead. Barrett. Quit running your mouth. You don't understand anything. Wait, don't be angry. I'm not joking. I came close to seeing the afterlife. There's no coming back from there. And your chores constantly beg you for walk, right? So how many people have you cursed already? N not so many. And what's next? Sooner or later, they'll get hungrier and hungrier. And 
and start dragging our souls to the grave. I wasn't close to too many stories. Your church will also drag you to hell, along with who knows how many peasants. You may be right. The chorts constantly ask for work. If I give them some slack, they'll ruin everything they see. What else can I do? You're saying my chorts will be the death of me. You can't know my fate. And you don't know his fate. That's right. I don't. But I decided to make my own fate. You have your fate. You heard the Troika. So that's your fate. Maybe it wasn't a trick. But I have it differently. You remember how I stole from the shop? It wasn't the first time. I've done lots of similar things. I think maybe I should quit this kind of life. Start a household. I know it's not as fun or exciting. You saved me. So I wanted to ask your advice. You were nowhere after all. What do you think? Well, Fetka, I've always told you to abandon your life of pleasure. Right, I'll try. Old habits die hard. Next thing you'll know, I have my own household. You better remember these words of yours. I will. I'm not old enough to have a bad memory. Fedka grins and flings the reins. Pakcha village is surrounded by mist, and the road to Vilgert lies ahead of you. You think that if someone wanted this wedding ruined, you wouldn't be stopped this easily. You look around anxiously and prepare for the worst. The winding path lures you in with a damp mist and mysterious shadows. What spirits hide behind them? Soon, you get to Cold Creek Ford. Yours and the bride's carts cross the water with a splash, but the third cart isn't so lucky. One of the wheels hits a stone, and all its passengers fall over. You look around and notice demon eyes in the dark. Fedka gives you a questioning look. What should you do with the rest of the guests? You hold the horses and give a lift to several nimble guests. The older and slower ones are lost in the mist. Behind your back, you hear human screams and demons croaking. In the mist, you can't tell what has become of the guests left behind. The wedding train reaches the shadows of the gloomy trees of the crooked forest. Strange sounds escape the evening darkness. It appears the mysterious Khaldun cursed this road as well. Your suspicions prove correct. Although you have known this forest since you were a child, the road meets a fork that you have no memory of. Looks like the turn on the right is used more often than the one to the left. You don't recognize the last fork, either. The road to the left looks like it's submerged in darkness, and you see some moonlight above the road to the right. You arrive at another fork. The road to the left lies through a thick forest, and to the right you see a clearing amongst the trees. Finally, the forest is behind you. Vilgert is close, so you decide to take a break. Mikhail's crossroads look unfamiliar. You feel as if you have entirely lost your sense of direction. You can't tell north from south. It's as if you are standing at this crossroads for the first time. You decide to resort to sorcery. You quickly whisper the words of the Zagavar and listen. You chose the right way. You make no mistake in choosing the road. This task is right down your alley. The road to Vilgert passes by uneventfully, and you have a chance to rest. Looks like this is the last piece of the road to the Church of the Trinity.
Василиса, stop the procession. Александр, we can't. It's a bad omen. I suppose I can hide it now. No time to argue. I intend to curse your wedding procession, and I'm willing to see it through. What? Are you telling me that everything you do is based on science? I can't leave it be. But only if you give me the book. But why do you need to ruin the wedding? It's simple. I can take this artifact only if you're sufficiently weakened. If the procession stops, the curse may splash out. Only God knows what should happen then. Right. You're only saying this so I wouldn't interfere. No such thing will happen. Listen to me. This is dangerous. Very dangerous. You can't scare me, Vasilisa. Either give me the book or the procession stops. Listen. Let me wed this couple and then we can fight. Why involve the bride and groom? You won't trick me, Vasilisa. I came especially prepared for this fight. Now when there's a curse around us, we are equal. I can't give you the book, you know that. Then it's the only way. Defense to up. The book, Vasilisa, and the guests will be safe. They have nothing to fear. I'll protect the wedding.
don't want to hurt you, Vasilisa. Not if I don't have to. You've been lying like the devil himself, and now you want me to believe you? Thy wedding procession will be transformed. Not if I stop you first. Alexander's driver notices that his master is weakened and strikes the horses. The carriage drives away. With horror, you realize that his last Zagavers weren't directed at you, but at the procession. The horses lose their footing and the first carts overturn with a terrible crash. The world around you turns into a cacophony of screams, both animal and human. Alexander's curse hits the weakened wedding procession and slices through it. Some of the wedding guests turn into wolves and run into the forest. Others have lost consciousness or are injured from the crash. You notice old Yegor and run towards him. Several Zagavars later, and your mentor comes to his senses. Grandpa! Grandpa, you're alive? Wish Elisa! Oh, Jesus, my head hurts. Wait, I'll whisper a bit. No time. What's happened to the procession? Was it cursed after all? Yes, many of the guests were turned to wolves. So they were. I wasn't seeing straight. I saw how Fijka was turning. I'll get that, Alexander. Oh, but what should we do now? Shush, don't whine. There's no time to think about that lad now. First, we fix the wedding. That's all right. You'll catch the wolves and heal them. Next thing you know, the seal will be broken. How will I find them? Even my chores may not be able to find the cursed. We'll find them. I have this old friend of mine, a hunter. He will track them. Find out who's missing, and fix up the wounded. Then we'll get ready for the road. How did they turn into wolves? No one has heard of such thing for a hundred years or more. Well, your friend there cast a strong curse. And then you were right. Fetchka is not very knowledgeable for a best man. 
How do I lift the curse? You need special herb, Cuckoo's Tears. It grows deep in the forest, in the Leshe's domain. I think this hunter of mine will give you a hand with the herb as well. So feet got turned also? Yes, there is his accordion. At first I thought I was seeing things. What do we do with the bride and groom now? They'll manage. I'll teach them a couple of secret prayers. Who's that friend of yours? Just a hunter. I'll tell you at home. Your friend, the Ikotnitsa, is lying here. Akulina has lost consciousness. It seems the girl is hurt. Akulina comes to her senses and with difficulty stands on her feet. Oh, Vasya! Have you healed me? Akulina, oh, you're alive. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus. She's going to be all right now. Akulina, have you noticed where the wolves went? I haven't. I don't remember anything since I fell. I can't see Piotr anywhere. He must have been turned too. Your mother will bring you home. Rest there. All right, Vasya. Thank you, Vasilisa Fyodorovna. I'll pray for you. Did you notice where the wolves ran? Somewhere in the direction of Pakcha. They hid in the forest straight away. I barely had any time to look. I only noticed that several of the bridesmaids turned. The horror. I've heard of such things, but never thought we'd witness it. Ready to go back. You can barely stand upright. Vasilisa, get up. It's morning already. We need to hurry while the wolf tracks are still fresh. I told you yesterday about my friend. The hunter, he is a master of his craft. He can track any beast. These aren't exactly beasts. And the hunters aren't exactly simple folk. They're knowers of their own sort. Some are friends with a leshy, others know Zagavars. This one is called Ayrat, a smart man. Lives near Cherting. You think he'll help me? He will. When you meet him, tell him I sent you. We had a deal. I give him the stuff, and he owes me one. How do I find the guests? You and Ayrat will follow the tracks. I also need to talk to Alexander. No point. He must have fled. If I were him, I would stay away from you. And leave him unpunished? Just give me a couple of seconds. I'll let him swell so much he won't fit into a card. You want to find him? So be it. Ask around in Alyoshkina village. The talk is that his family is from there. I found this out during my last visit there. The moment we took on the next seal, the wolves showed up. As if the devil himself arranged it. I don't know. If anyone helps us, it must be some power from above. Satan can only spoil things, and forces of light wouldn't curse a wedding. Mysterious are his ways. Who knows? Who knows? You think I can break the curse with the wedding guests? Only you can find it out. Where can I find your friend? 
Ayrat lives close to Charding. You'll learn about him in the town, in the hunting shop there. It's summer now, so he shouldn't be wandering in the woods. To cure the wolves, look for a cuckoo's tears herb. You should find it in the forest. Some herbalists may also have it. Have a look in the town market. And above all, don't forget the seal. All right, Grandpa. Greetings, kind host. We bear gifts. A fine rooster for you, which should prove useful for the household. Greetings. Come sit by the table. Need any help? Oh, we have a disaster on our hands in our village of Klepnikova. Oh, the things that have happened. We must have made Aleshi angry. Yesterday, a shepherd was looking after our cattle, and a pack of wolves jumped him. Scared halfway to death he was. They wanted to kill him alone with the animals, but he threw his accordion at them. He wants to be a musician, and a wolf tore at it instead. The man ran as fast as he could. He barely made it. I think I can deal with that pack. Then there is this strange thing. One of the wolves, our shepherd has a sharp eye, was wearing a jacket. Holy Mother, Lord Jesus! All right. I'll help. Oh, thank you, mistress. I won't forget it. Half the village has gathered in front of yesterday's bride. The peasants are violently knocking on the gates. Looks like you've come just in time. The situation is getting hotter with every minute. Come out, Agafia! Bring out your girl, that cursed witch! I'll beat her so hard she'll bring our kin back right away. I heard it's a potent remedy. Why have you gathered here? It's late. Go back to your homes. Who are you, girl? She's a witch from Vilgard. Don't expect kindness from her. Well, let's beat her first. I'll probably remove the curse from the wedding guests. There are no guilty people here. You're bucking up the wrong tree. Never trust a witch. That's what my pa used to say. It seems that the peasants are hostile. How can I convince them otherwise? You want to beat me? I alone can help you. And the bride? You think she wanted to curse her own groom? She wanted to get married as soon as possible. Why would she hurt her guests? She didn't transform the procession. Some men did it. Many people saw it. Ask those who weren't turned. All right. We believe you this time. But you better bring back my son. I'm going to lift the curse. Soon everyone will be at home. After discussing your arguments, the peasants disperse. One old lady even blesses you and gives you some milk. The bride opens the gates and thanks you for your help. While hurrying to Vilgert, you walk onto the main road and see a dark whirlwind coming your way. In a moment, you realize it to be a short swarm and open the black book.
The last chort disappears into black flames. You can only wonder who set this swarm upon you. You carefully move along the silent street, looking at the carved windows of the rich houses. Suddenly, you hear two muffled voices coming from the town cemetery. At least I remember you, right, Ilya? One wheel is stop already, you spawn of the devil. What if the left one and the right one pop up? What then, huh? Well, they surely won't. They've forgotten about you. I asked around, you know. Damn. I wish I couldn't see you for a century or so. That's what I'm talking about. Precisely a century is almost up. And we've been doing so well together. I didn't even touch you. Wait. I smell something. You decide to stay and listen to the end of the conversation. You didn't give me quarter, though, did you? I tell you, come the dust, the pine leaves. And you? It's all about cursing someone for you. And how would you curse weddings without me, huh? Yeah, those were the days. I stopped processions all right, and transformed wedding guests. Only I'm going to hell for this. I saved you from the inferno, didn't I? Just lie here quietly in your grave. Later with that, I smell something foul. A live one. Look, a witch is eavesdropping on us. Well, we scrub her now, won't we? In the village, you spot a group of peasants with a priest. The father sprinkles the well with the holy water. A prayer is read. After the ritual is over, the group disperses except for one old man, who continues to cross himself. What, girl? Came to drink your field? No, can do. The well's gone dry. The Lord punishes. You describe your acquaintance and ask about Alexander. There are hundreds of rich Alexanders like that all over Perm, pretty girl. You think you can find yours here? I've lived here in Alyoshkina for a long time, girl. I may be able to help you. This village used to belong to landlords. Our masters weren't cruel, but they were somewhat peculiar. What were their names, lords? Help me. 
can't remember. But they were interested in demons and Zagavors. Their servants used to talk about how they performed some kind of mansion rituals or something. Well, we also had a nowhere girl. What a beauty she was. They took her as nanny for their son. The boy was named Sasha. That's why I'm telling you this. They've moved now. Where? I don't know. Ask around in town. When did the well go dry? Only recently. Up until now, everything was fine. I may be able to fix it. You know something? That's good. The only thing more important in life than knowledge is the belief in God. In the village, you spot a group of peasants with a priest. The father sprinkles the well with the holy water. The well seems to have dried up long ago. Your skin crawls when at its bottom you see the burning eyes of a demon. You look at the peasant, bend over the well, and call out to the spirit in a whisper. Ah, huh? You scared me, girl. Are you a Kaldun? What kind of chort are you? I am a polyvoy. I look after fields. I guard them. But this time, the chorts were too strong. I tend to the grasses and look after the cattle if they graze on my field. There is a little of our kind left here. What are you doing down there? You're a polyvoy, not a well spirit. The well is dry because of you. I send the water away. How would I stay down here otherwise? I can't go back to my fields at night, so I just wait here until the morning. Some wicked shorts turned up in my field. They won't leave me alone. All night they play cards and make noise, so I sleep here at night. Will you leave this well if I deal with those shorts? Sure I will. What else do I need this place for? I am a polyvoy, not a well spirit. I'll help you then. Soon it will be quiet at night in your field. In the village, you spot a group of peasants with a priest. You whisper a prayer and catch your breath. In the field, you find a noisy company of chorts immersed in a game of cards. When you order them to leave the field, they laugh and offer you a bet. If you win, they'll leave the field be. But if you lose, they'll take your soul. After getting rid of the chorts, you get back to the village. The thankful Polyvoy gives you a treasure consisting of copper coins and a silver dish, which he found in his field. There's a winding trail that leads through the gloomy woods to the place where cattle graze. For some reason, people call it a road. You cautiously look around and suddenly hear muted growling from the shadows. 
Could it be your imagination? You draw a circle and open the book. Minutes pass, but only the empty night surrounds you. At least you had some practice. The bank is wrapped in a slippery fog. You look into the milky veil, expecting to see running wolf shadows, but notice only the swirls of the slippery haze. After looking around, you notice some wolf tracks on the sand, and a torn up shepherd's accordion. The tracks are leading east, and are lost in the forest fog. You follow them for some time, but you finally lose them, along with your sense of direction. Suddenly, you're injured by a sharp branch that came out of nowhere. This instrument obviously went through the paws of some wild beast. Its body is scratched with claws, and the bellows are torn to shreds. In the grills of the instrument, you find a broken wolf tooth. There's a drop near the road. It's notorious for the stories told of it. They say two bandits killed each other here in a dispute over money. They were both buried here. They say the reason for their fight is still at the bottom of this ravine. It smells of rot and graveyard dampness at the bottom. You find three old graves here. You whisper a prayer and catch your breath. Even the bandits deserve peace. Even after sunset, the town is boiling with activity. The shops and stalls are open. Your eyes are dragged towards high stone domes and merchant houses almost against your will. You soon find a hunting shop old Yegor was telling you about. and go forth. Knowledge will serve as your daily bread. We didn't see you at Mr. Nikolsky's house yesterday. Did something happen? Oh, right. The Dvorovoys have lost the key, and I was left without a dress at the last possible moment. I couldn't afford to show up like some kind of unkempt peasant girl now, could I? What are you looking at, girl? By whose orders are you here? I accidentally overheard your conversation. I can help. Even if the key is lost, there's a popular remedy. Hmm. I can give the right herb to those Cherdon women. What was that herb that opened locks? Here. Press this break herb onto the lock and it will open. <laughs> open the lock with an herb? Are you jesting? Wait. An hour helped my servants one time. He also used a herb. Surprisingly, it helped. Everything is possible nowadays. Have you heard how the spiritual sense of Mr. S went? Yes, really. Thank you for your help. I've heard of the potential of folk remedies, but I wouldn't think it would be applicable to locks. 
Here, buy yourself a Prianik. You question the townswomen about your acquaintance. I know who you're talking about. This family is definitely of means. I heard he is the sole heir. I think their family state is somewhere in the suburbs. A couple of tiny chorts are sitting on the drunkard's left shoulder. Perhaps they're to blame for his present state. This puny thing isn't worth a Zagavar. The moment you touch your book, the demons disappear, muttering angrily. The peasant, it seems, has started to breathe more steadily. By the curtain daily, comes with a calendar. The state councillor publishes the paper, but doesn't let it out. I've gotten hold of some on your behalf, and I'll sell one to you for less than a half. Mr. Fairbanks, I need to question you about one of your buyers. <laughs> I don't care what you need. A hunter had to buy supplies from you. His name is Irad. A peasant girl doesn't belong here. Foo, foo. You hold out a handful of coins. Looks like the merchant is ready to help you now. It's a pity he hasn't become less arrogant. All right, all right. I'll tell you about your hunter, but leave me alone. Irad lives on the edge of Cheridan, in the east. I haven't seen him in my shop for a long time. I don't know why you would need him, and I don't care. I think he's finished hunting. Well, not just stand here in front of the shop. You've learned what you need, so go. The welcoming light of the Hunter's Lodge is lost among the gloomy outline of pines at the forest's edge. The trees look like stern guardians, standing watch over the grim secrets of the forest. The host is standing near the house. God bless. Salam. Who are you? I am a granddaughter of Igor Churov, a knower from Vilgard. Vasilisa. Long time no see. I remember when you were this tall. Well, what brings you here? I came for help. I need to go to the forest, track the wolves. The wolves, you say? You tell him about the events of the wedding. It so happens that I know. I'll help you. I've known Shurale for a long time. I'll guide you through the forest. You think the Liashe is to blame? But how will we find the wolves? We will, Alabirga, we will. The wolves are gathering in the pack. They'll need a leader. The tracks are leading to Palud, so we'll go there. I was thinking, where did so many wolves come from? It turns out it's your doing. This man is to blame, Alexander. I hear, but he failed to protect. Now your wolves are running amok. They wounded my falcon. They could start attacking people. We need to hurry. Grandpa told me you've known each other for a long time, so you know me as well. I... I saw you when I visited Igor. You were little then. They didn't call him old Igor then. Did he help you? He did. But all was not well. It's a long story. You're hunting with a falcon? I don't remember hearing about that. I... it's a rare skill. So what now? The curse is passed on to him, but the bite is a weak one. Let me have a look at your bird. The wound has almost closed, but the falcon looks bad. You feel the traces of the curse on the wound. Hmm, the falcon needs a herb, but which one would be good for a curse? Maybe Adam's head? But the wound is closing already. You need Peter's cross. I think we can find it nearby. You search the closest glades, and soon find the herb you seek. Several Zagavars, and the falcon is cured. Thank Allah. Thank you, Vasilisa. 
The God didn't study you in vain. Take it. I know the feather will be useful in a sorcery. We need to hurry. They could scatter, and then we won't be able to find them. It seems some of them are going towards the hunter. Be careful. Several wolf-like figures emerge from the forest. The beasts do not waste any time for their attack. The wounded beasts retreat with fangs bared. With the help of a few old Zagavars, one of the attackers turns into a human. The rest of the beasts, who were ordinary wolves, hide in the forest. You feel the power that fills the Black Book. The seal is still intact, but you're on the right path. Allah, it's true. He turned back. What's... what's going on? Have you drank too much? I wish that were the case. You had a curse on you. Now you're safe. Go home. Good. Thank you, Vasilisa. We saved one. How many are left? Yes. We need to stock up on herbs to break the curse. You can find the herbs all over the forest. Let's rest a bit and get going. Follow me. I have a sum of water ready. 